Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This first video is going to be basically about the economy. Uh, the first article I have up is New Greek Privatization Chief Has Been Appointed. Uh, this banker on Wednesday was appointed by the Greek government, and this is from July 26. So um, it says here, as head of the institution in charge of privatization, a key EU and IMF demand in return for bailout money. Four steps which destroyed Argentina. This is an article that appeared in Prosperity, February 2003. It's the following from his Greg Palace website, an expanded American edition of his global bestseller, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. And he goes on there, it says, Bolivia's in flames, its economy shot dead, and I've got my hands on the murder weapon, the same one that killed Argentina's economy, the country's assistance strategies of the World Bank and IMF. They are marked confidential, and how he got them, well, that's not important, but following is uh, for this month's Harper Magazine, my expose of a batch of these secretive plans for the seizure, control, and ultimate ruin of the nations the IMF supposedly seeks to save. So Argentina's Country Assistance Strategy Progress Report from June 2001, this document nominally produced by the World Bank, represents the interlocking directives of both the bank and the IMF, as well as indirectly the wishes of both institutions, largest patron of the United States Treasury Department. So it goes on and says that these agreements serve as a de facto legislation, meticulous in detail and ideological in thrust. These obligations, the report did not need to add, were largely to foreign creditors, including the IMF and World Bank themselves. So it says here, since 94, in fact, Argentina's budget deficits had been entirely uh, attributable to interest payments on foreign loans. So to reduce this deficit per IMF decree, Argentina had cut $3 billion from government spending. In the 1990s, the nation was the poster child for globalization having followed without question the IMF and World Bank program. The reform plan for Argentina is for every nation has four steps. The first of these capital market liberalization was achieved in 91's convertibility plan, which pegged the Argentina peso in a one-to-one -one relationship with the U.S. dollar. It was to, designed to keep inflation low and make the deficit spending difficult in hopes of attracting comfort, comforting foreign investors. So it goes on, it says that these liberalized markets free capital to flow in and out of cross borders, but once our Argentina's economy began to wobble, money simply flowed out. So the second step in this IMF World Bank uh, regimen is privatization, both at the urging of lenders and out of financial necessity. Argentina throughout the 90s sold off what Argentina is now ruefully call Las Joyas de Miabuela or whatever, grandmother's jewels, the state oil, gas, water, electric companies, and the state banks. It was quite a fire sale. It goes on to say, Vivendi of France won rural water systems, Enron of Texas, the pipes of Buenos Aires, and Fleet of Boston took the provincial banks. In 94, the World Bank's urging Argentina partially privatized even its social security system, diverting much of it into private accounts. Goes on here and says this uh, Center for Economic and Policy Research calculated the revenue loss from this decision alone to be almost equal to the nation's budget deficit during the period. And so you can go in there and check this out. Links will be posted. Don't mention Argentina and Greece in the same breath. And the article kind of goes on to make the argument about how much of a piece of a crap Argentina was for defaulting uh, on basically the biggest sovereign debt default in history. It says, whereas Argentina has ignored more than 100 court decisions around the world, a U.S. District Court judge who handled many of the cases has called Argentina's stiffening of its creditors immoral. So it says, and I'm going to finish up here and I'll tie it in with this new article I got coming, uh, what's troubling to European policy experts in, in that Greece, or if it comes to Spain and who knows what other countries will look like, or will look at Argentine experience and say, that's a good solution for us. So you can see what this article is trying to do. And it's, uh, if you move to this, it says Iceland has hired an ex-cop to hunt down the bankers that wrecked its economy. So if you were involved in the Icelandic high finance in the run-up to the recession, you might want to start watching your back. It says uh, that's because the government has appointed a white-collar crime bounty hunter who wants to haul your behind in alive, to be sure. So this individual they appointed oversees a posse of a says here 100 researchers to help track down outlaws. outlaws. He netted some major convictions since starting in 2009, including the former chief of staff of the country's finance minister on inside training charges. So that's what they're talking about here. They don't want that happening. Or people just in general realizing uh, the scam of the system itself. 
It says here, Spain concedes to full EU IMF bailout. Spain's admitted for the first time it might need a full EU IMF bailout worth 300 billion euros after its borrowing costs soared to a record 7.6%. So we're just talking about Argentina being morally wrong for not uh, paying back these creditors after defaulting. It says here, an MP says, uh, paying tradesmen in cash is morally wrong. The Treasury Ministry has hit out at households who pay tradesmen in cash, saying it's morally wrong as it helps workers avoid tax. Getting a discount with your plumber by paying cash in hand is something that is a big cost to the revenue and means others have to pay more in tax. I think it's morally wrong. It is illegal for the plumber, but it is pretty implicit in those circumstances that there is a reason why there is a discount for cash. This is a large part of the hidden economy. Austerity measures are suicidal, Spanish unions say. In a statement, they said that the recent financial reforms were suicidal for their country and were putting a break on possible economic recovery and job creation. I just go to France, um, where they just passed measures. It was a 75% uh, tax hike on people making, I think it's what, over a million and a half or something dollars. So, yeah, they're probably going to be leaving there uh, pretty soon. Greece suicides rate soars. So more taxes, higher prices, no jobs. It's from August 7, 2012. The birthplace of the Olympics in northern Greece. Two young men committed suicide over financial problems. Greece and supporters from around the world mourn daily. Daily as suicide rate soars in Greece as the crisis worsens, some believe these are not suicides but financial murders. Then we have this one, more than half of young Greeks are unemployed. Greek youth unemployment figures released on Thursday says here it marked another record high at 54.9% in May compared to around 41% to the same period last year. And moving over to the United States, the employment rate in, that, in the United States is lower than it was during the last recession. The gray shaded bar in the chart right here represents the last recession as defined by the Federal Reserve. This is what, 2008, 2009. As you can see, the percentage of working age Americans with a job dropped sharply from nearly 63% at the start of 2008 to a little above 59% when the recession ended. But the employment rate kept on dropping even further. It finally bottomed out at 58% in December of 2009. Since that time, it has stayed very steady and has not fallen below 58%, and it has not risen back above 59%. They say this is very odd because after every other recession since World War II, this number has always bounced back strongly. This is something I've actually mentioned uh, in an article from Zero Hedge. In essence, it's starting to look like 4% of the working age population of the United States has been removed from the workforce permanently. So that's what you call useless eaters. Americans not paid livable wages says here Americans are not paid livable wages, says an author and social activist uh, Solomon uh, Kamasiong of Washington, D.C. says uh, we know that since the late 70s, the wages for American workers has stagnated, he said on a phone interview on Thursday. At the same time, the earnings from these large corporations and companies are at an all-time high. Owners of corporations and companies have never seen this kind of wealth come to their pockets, he added. There are more Americans depend on the federal government than ever before in U.S. history. So, yeah, it says 100 million Americans are enrolled in at least one welfare program run by the federal government. This is about a third of the entire population of the country, and that does not even include Social Security or Medicare. Next up, hanging effigies, or basically fake bodies, rattle Vegas. So, some drivers feared they were real people. It says here, two surprise billboards featuring hanging effigies nearly knocked Las Vegans off their game yesterday. Mannequins with nooses around their necks hung from uh, both billboards, each on a major highway. They appeared to be some kind of jobless protest, saying, dying for a job, said a hand-painted message on a billboard, while the other read, hope you're happy, Wall Street. Some drivers, fearing they were real bodies, phoned police. No one claimed responsibility for the signs, but Occupy Las Vegas quickly posted the photos of the billboards on its website, calling it street art. Noting that Clark County, which includes Las Vegas, has the second highest rate of adult suicide in the country right now. Interesting, of course, the authorities, right? It's a publicity stunt, obviously done in bad taste. So, And I thought of something recently, which was um, when I saw an AP raw video of, of just fires and wildfires, uh, basically from the drought in Oklahoma, and I just saw, like, on the highway, all of these trucks and cars, they were just flying by, doing 80, 90, nobody stops or anything, right? I mean, it was just a huge uh, thing. You'd be like, well, what can I do? What could I do? 
what I would, and this is the thing, I don't really expect people to do anything, but at the same time, just looking at that, it tells a lot about our society, which is commerce keeps moving, right? Like the guy uh, at the Olympics who was jumping off that bridge, um, a taxi driver, he was striking, and he, he jumped off the bridge, and they said, oh, and the police officer said, that was very stupid, um, you know, uh, he could have hurt somebody else, you know, um, he held up commerce, you know, and that's what it's all about, so, you know, back in the day, if you saw something on fire, you might want to stop your carriage and go and see if somebody needs help putting the fire out, um, you know, to help them and their families, but now it doesn't, doesn't really matter, I mean, there could be someone getting, um, uh, fucking murdered on the side of the highway, and I, I hate to say this, but most people will just drive right past, or they'll call the police and have somebody else take care of it. But God forbid if the police actually do something that will cause people to say, well, why is there a body hanging from there, and what is the message? Hope you're happy, Wall Street. See? No, they're more concerned with um, not or having to see reality up front in their faces, which is why they turn to television and entertainment. Um, and, you know, basically they just shut down when you start talking about serious issues like that. So you have, like, stuff like this. Teen wins back-to-back -back speed texting title titles. So America's fastest texter takes home $50,000. It also makes sense that, what, texting overtakes talking in the U.K. So people don't want to talk. They want to text, and they want to get into competitions to see who can text the most and the fastest. About absolute garbage, right? Suicides outpacing war deaths for the troops. So, yeah, more people are... Uh, being killed from suicides in the military than actual um, combat deaths. So that tells you a lot about uh, what we're doing overseas. It says here a sharp rise in North Ireland suicide rates. And um, yeah, so it doubled since the signing of the Belfast Agreement in 98. And why do I bring this up? Because it just kind of segues into it. Alaska study, suicide rates for natives remains at an all-time high. So, and uh, what is this trend here? These are all people that are being uh, victimized. These are all people that are being oppressed. Tibetan woman dies after setting herself alight on Tuesdays. She said, oh, yeah, and don't forget, they had uh, she had an intermittent mental disease. I, I remember seeing another article about someone that did that, uh, did something similar to that. And they said, oh, he was uh, mentally handicapped. So um, it says here, July was hottest month in U.S. history. It trumps all federal records going back to 1895. And this is followed by what, of course, the droughts. Drought worsens in key farm states. It says that uh, the excessively parched conditions continue to worsen in plain states that are key producers of corn and soybean. It says, it says here that that's because key farm states didn't get as much uh, benefit from the rains as elsewhere. That's right. Don't you remember, I think it was Tom Vilsack from the Department of Agriculture saying, oh, we have to pray for rain, basically co-opting a grassroots real thing where people in churches and neighborhoods were actually praying for rain. Well, they got it, and they got their chemtrail weather modification aerosol spraying, and they got their rain. And like today, we have a nice little drip drizzle uh, chemical rain. But it's too late because I see the trees, and a lot of the trees are dead. They're dead. Pine trees, they're, they're gone. This is good. This is good for the international complexes, um, such as Monsanto and that, with their drought-resistant seeds and that, that help sterilize you and kills off these useless cedars. Global food prices uh, rise sharply in July, says the United Nations. 2012 drought is impacting Mississippi River barges. They're actually bottoming out now, and it won't be possible to move in the autumn if the rainfall does not normalize. The heat and drought is also savaging U.S. infrastructure. It says that the roads are cracking, nuclear plants are shutting down as weather grows extreme. They say the integrity of a nation's infrastructure is a direct reflection of its overall morale, social, economic, and political health. So it says here, America's infrastructure is crumbling, says the American Society of Civil Engineers. Recent extreme heat waves, a result of global warming, says NASA scientists. Remember, remember James Lovelock, another alarmist confession, climate scientist, says he was extrapolating too far, says others like Al Gore were as alarm alarmist as well. And climate modeling failure, latest IPCC climate models to be used in 2013 report, fail at temperature predictions as well. And the biotech giants are bankrolling a GMO free-for-all. Talking about Monsanto, Syngenta, Dow, DuPont. Prices of the crops they focus on corn, soy, cotton, or soaring pushed up by the severe drought. So it says higher crop prices typically translate to increased pesticide sales as farmers have more money to spend on agrochemicals and more incentives to maximize their yield. And Russia scientists say genetically modified foods are harmful. Just tested on animals, they said they lose their ability to reproduce. So when water is scarce, you may want to save it like this guy who's taking on the state of Oregon where it's illegal to collect rainwater. Or these people who refuse to rip up their illegal vegetable garden. I mean, it's just about public safety.